Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with pizza dough pretzels. That's right, while I would never use store-bought pizza dough to actually make pizza with, allegedly, I will happily use it to shave a couple hours off production if I'm making pretzels. But regardless, whether you make your dough from scratch or use the ready-made stuff from the store, the method for making pretzels is exactly the same. And with October and its associated beer fest right around the corner, I think the timing is perfect. So let's go ahead and get started with the aforementioned store-bought pizza dough. Like I said, not something I normally enjoy using for actual pizza, but it really does work quite well for these. And what we'll do to get started is flour our work surface because we need to do two things to this dough. We need to make it a little less wet and sticky, as well as warm it up a little bit, since we'll assume it came right from the store or your fridge. So we'll place our dough down and add a little more flour to the top. And then all we're gonna do is knead in a couple tablespoons of flour or until it's no longer extra sticky to the touch. Okay, a little bit tacky's fine, but if it's really wet and sticky, it's gonna be too tough to work with. So like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and knead in a couple tablespoons of flour. And after a few minutes, we should have something that's still sort of soft and supple and a little bit tacky, but not too sticky, like most good pizza doughs are. So that is looking and feeling pretty good right there. And during this kneading in a little extra flour process, we've also warmed up that dough a little bit. Because don't forget, if we'd made our dough from scratch, it would be room temperature and not chilled. So with that in mind, what we'll do once we've kneaded a little flour in, we'll simply cover that with a bowl and let it sit on the counter for about 15 or 20 minutes to continue warming up while we go ahead and set up our water bath. And it's this step where we boil our pretzels in an alkaline solution that is the key to the entire pretzel operation. And back in the olden times, we would have done this with lye. But that is far too dangerous for us modern folk. So these days, we're going to use baking soda. And that's going to create a very alkaline solution, which is going to pretty much do exactly the same thing. And basically, all we have to do is stir that in and then bring this up to a simmer on medium-high heat. And what we'll do once that's simmering is boil our pretzels for about a minute. And that's what's going to produce that signature texture, color, taste, and maybe most importantly, aroma. Your kitchen's going to smell exactly like one of those pretzel stands. And then once that's been accomplished, we'll move back to our dough, which is hopefully now closer to room temp. And all we're gonna do is dust it with a little more flour and then kind of press it down. And if yours is still a little bit sticky, like mine is right there, don't be afraid to use a little more flour. But be careful, if you work in too much, the inside of your pretzel could get dense and heavy. But anyway, like I said, we're gonna kind of press that down and then do our best to divide that into six equal pieces, which I sort of did. If you really want these exact size, you weigh each one. But I don't have time for that, so I just eyed it. And sometimes you take a little piece of dough from a big one and smoosh it into a smaller one. And then what we'll do once our dough is divided into six pieces is form each one of those into its own little dough ball and then proceed with the shaping. And the one drawback, and maybe the only drawback to using pizza dough for this, I find it very difficult to roll out into those long ropes to form the traditional pretzel shape. So I just usually go with the ring, which I like to form as shown, just kind of flatten that out into a disc, then I'll just tear through the center and kind of keep pulling and stretching it like that until I've achieved my desired shape. And by the way, yes, you can make knots if you prefer, but I'm not a big fan of the knot. It's too close to a roll. I'd rather make something that's too close to a bagel. And I should mention, you do have some control over the final texture here. Okay, the larger and thinner the ring, the chewier and denser your pretzel, whereas smaller, fatter rings are gonna be a little more bready. So I'm generally shooting for something in the middle. And then what we'll do once our pretzels are formed and our baking soda water bath is simmering, we will go ahead and carefully transfer those in. And then what we're gonna do is boil these for 30 seconds per side. That's all it takes. And as you can see, I'm just doing two at a time. We probably have enough room to do three, but I guess I was scared the water temperature would drop too much. So since these only take a minute, I'm just gonna do two at a time. And by the way, if you're thinking to yourself, I hate boiling things for a minute. I think I'm gonna skip this step. It's probably not that big of a deal. Well, it's a huge deal. It's this alkaline bath which turns what would be just normal bread into a pretzel. And yes, I do realize they look a little elephant manish right now, but don't worry. When these are baked, they look absolutely amazing. So we will let those go for half a minute before flipping them over. Whoops. There we go. But anyway, we'll give that second side 30 seconds also, at which point we will carefully fish those out, letting any excess water drain off, and what we'll do is transfer those onto a parchment-lined and cornmealed baking sheet. Okay, so lay down a piece of parchment and some cornmeal. And for me, that's the ideal surface to bake these on. And what we need to do as soon as we set those down, while they're still wet and sticky, 
is sprinkle a little bit of coarse salt over the surface. Otherwise, they're not going to taste as good and only sort of look like pretzels. And I want mine to look exactly like pretzels. So as we're boiling these, we'll salt the top of each one. And then one thing I like to do once my pretzels have been shaped, boiled, and salted, is I like to let them sit on the counter for about 5 or 10 minutes. So they're all about the same temp when they go in the oven. I don't really know how big a deal that would be, but I'm not going to find out. So I do like to let them sit for about 5 or 10 minutes, at which point we could transfer those into the center of a 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes, or until they look like this. Oh yeah. Check it out. We made pretzels out of pizza dough. And something you don't hear too often, but look at those gorgeous stretch marks. So I think these are just absolutely stunning. And by the way, you can bake these on a silt pad if you want. But by using that parchment paper and cornmeal, you're going to get a beautiful, beautiful bottom crust, which you can see right here, just absolutely perfect. And then what we'll do as usual is transfer these to a rack to cool, or at least that's my suggestion. I know some of you will tear into these as soon as they come out of the oven, piping hot. But as with most baked goods, the texture is going to be better if you let them cool a little. And as I was looking at these on the rack, I realized how uneven my dough portions must have been, since we have quite a variation in appearance here. Although you know what, who cares? The next person at an Oktoberfest party that complains about the homemade pretzels being uneven will be the first person. So I'm fine with a little unevenness. Hey, I'm a little uneven. But anyway, we're going to let those cool completely, at which point we will serve those up with some mustard and hopefully a carbonated adult beverage. And I really think when you break one of these open, you're going to be shocked how close these taste, smell, feel, and look to a classically made soft pretzel. We have that signature dark, chewy, salty crust encasing a relatively light and tender middle, which for me personally is the perfect style of soft pretzel. And while I do enjoy mine with mustard, feel free to use any dip you want, except ranch. You people have to take it easy with the ranch. So anything but ranch will work. And as I mentioned, an adult carbonated beverage is also highly, highly recommended. So I'm going to pour that into a frozen mug, which turned my warm beer instantly into foam. But through the magic of editing, I finished the pour, and it really doesn't get much better than a homemade soft pretzel, mustard, and beer. But anyway, that's it. Pizza dough pretzels. If you want to make your dough from scratch, feel free. You are, after all, the Daenerys Targaryen of making these like a Bavarian. But if you do want to shave a few hours off production time, the pizza dough really does work amazingly well. So I really do hope you give these a try soon. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.